Hi, in this problem we're going to graph this function. We have y equals one half times the cosine of one half x minus pi over four solution. So we're gonna just follow a simple step-by-step -step process to do this. So the first step is going to be to take whatever is here and set it between zero and two pi. So we have zero less than or equal to one half x minus pi over four, less than or equal to two pi. Okay, so step one is you take whatever is here and you set it between zero and two pi. I should mention that you can follow the same procedure when graphing a sine function, so it also works. The next step is to solve this inequality for x. To do that, we'll have to start by adding this pi over four to both sides. So plus pi over four, plus pi over four, or rather all three sides, plus pi over four. All right, this is a compound inequality. It's really two inequalities in one. These cancel, so here we get pi over four, less than or equal to one half x. And then here we have to add these, two pi plus pi over four. So the easiest way to do this is ask yourself, how do you think of two pi is a number over four. Well, it's really eight pi over four because eight over four is two. And so eight pi over four plus pi over four is going to give us nine pi over four. Almost there, we still have to solve for x being multiplied by one half. So we can multiply by two in order to cancel the one half. So that gives us pi over two because that goes into that twice less than or equal to x, less than or equal to, again, two goes into four twice, nine pi over two. Good stuff. All right, so basically we're going to take this interval now and we're going to subdivide it into equal parts. We'll plug in the numbers to our function and then just connect the dots and we're done. So we're not gonna be using uh, any shifting or shrinking or stretching or, or things like that. Instead, we're taking a very, very simple computational approach where we take this, set it between zero and two pi, solve for x, and then we're just going to subdivide this interval into equal parts, and from there we'll just plot points. And this is a nice method because it always works uh, for sine and cosine functions. So you can always do this, and using this method you can graph any sine function and any cosine function. All right, so we need to find the width of our little subintervals. So this is going to be where we start. This is going to be the lower. And this is going to be the upper limit that we plug in, the upper point uh, in our interval. So now we're gonna compute delta x. So the formula for delta x, is always gonna be upper minus lower. And then we're gonna divide it into four. Okay, four is just a nice number. So this will be upper is nine pi over two, minus lower, which is pi over two, and we're gonna divide that by four. So nine pi over two minus pi over two is eight pi over two. And remember, this is in parentheses, right? This is in parentheses two, and this is over four. And then eight pi over two is just really um, four pi. So this is four pi over four, which is simply pi. So our delta x here is pi. Very nice. Okay, so now we're going to take this and we're going to add it to this repeatedly until we get to nine pi over two. In order to make that process easier, because we're adding pi to pi over two, think of pi as a number over two, so it's really two pi over two. Okay, let's go ahead and draw a picture of our interval here. So I'm gonna draw it here. Use a different color here. So we'll start with, let me say pi over two. So pi over two is gonna be the first, first number. And then we're going to add two pi over two to that. That's gonna give us three pi over two. And then we'll add two pi over two to that again. That'll give us five pi over two. Add it again, it's gonna give us seven pi over two. Then add it one more time, it'll give us nine pi over two. 
and that's where we stop because that's the upper limit of our interval you see so a uh, very very simple procedure once you know it again you take whatever is here set it between 0 and 2 pi solve for x and then just always do this one minus this one divided by 4 take your delta x and just keep adding it to this one till you get to this one all right let's go ahead and connect these dots to draw our interval here so we're going to graph it along this interval here. these are the points that we're going to plug in we're graphing it on this closed interval here this is where we're graphing our function i already forgot what our function was um i don't know if i have it written down oh here it is okay <laughs> i was like where did i get this problem from no i do have it written down um i'll write it here it's y equals one half cosine i have not done this problem by the way one half x minus pi over four and so this is going to be uh, our function that we are going to graph okay so now the rest of this is very computational we're just basically going to plug in each of these numbers into this and we're going to get five different ordered pairs and we'll plot them and we'll connect the dots and this is the part where you know you know graphing is something that i'm not naturally good at and you know even the straight line took me took me some work so just do your best so y of pi over two that's the first one we're going to look at, right? You can think of this as y of x, right? This is a function of x. So y of pi over 2. And unfortunately, I have to write a little bit smaller. It's a messy computation. This is 1 half cosine of 1 half times pi over 2 minus pi over 4. That's pi over 4, right? Minus pi over 4. So that's cosine of 0. It's 1 half cosine 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, so 1 half times 1 is 1 half. So our first ordered pair is pi over 2, 1 half. And what I like to do here is I like to put these in boxes um, so I don't lose them in my work. So that's our first ordered pair. Notice how we didn't need to use the calculator. I went through that very, very quickly. Um, so it's, it's not tough. You just plug in the x value. And then here, 2 times 2 is 4. So you get pi over 4 minus pi over 4, which is 0. The one half hangs out. Cosine of zero was one, and that's because uh, on the unit circle, cosine is the x coordinate, and the x coordinate at zero is one. So that's your y value, that's your x value, and so you write it as an ordered pair like this. Let's go to the next one. So now we're going to do three pi over two. So three pi over two, and that's one half cosine of one half times three pi over two minus pi over 4. That's equal to 1 half cosine. So this will be 3 pi over 4 minus pi over 4. Okay, so because this, this is 2 times 2 is 4. So 3 pi over 4 minus pi over 4 is 2 pi over 4, which is the same thing as pi over 2. Skipping some steps here to save room. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0 because it's the um, x coordinate uh, when um, the angle is pi over 2. So it's going to be um, 1. I think I might have misspoke up here. So cosine is the x-coordinate. So uh, when angle is 0, the x-coordinate is 1. And then here, uh, the x-coordinate is 0. So it's 1 half times 0, which is just 0, because this, this is 0. So our new ordered pair is going to be 3 pi over 2, comma 0. Boom. Really nice. Really nice problem, right? Not, not, it works out really nice always. The computations are nice and clean. Um, let's do another one. Let's we have to keep going five pi over two. So you see it's it is a little bit tedious. It just takes some time. Just have to have patience. Uh, so this is one half cosine of one half times, and then your x is five pi over two minus, and this is pi over four. So five pi over four minus pi over four is four pi over four, which is pi. This is cosine of pi. Cosine of pi is negative 1, so this is negative 1 half. And so this gives us 5 pi over 2, negative 1 half. Some people ask, um, can you use a calculator for this computation? You can, but I think it's more work. It takes longer to type this in your calculator than it does to do it by hand once you know what you're doing. So it's just, it's just easier to do it by hand. I mean, typing all these fractions in, it's just not, uh, it's not fun. I think it's more fun to do it by hand. And then 7 pi over 2. Also, it's way more instructive. You, you get to learn what these angles are. It makes you think about the unit circle. This is 1 half cosine of 1 half times 7 pi over 2 minus pi over 4. 
this is one half cosine let's see this is going to be seven pi over four minus pi over four which is six pi over four which is three pi over two i think i did that right yep eight pi over seven pi over four minus pi over four is six pi over four which is three pi over two cosine of three pi over two is the x coordinate when the angle is three pi over two on the unit circle and that x coordinate would be zero so this is one half times zero which is zero so this ordered pair would be seven pi over two comma zero all right we have uh one more one more and we're done right we can plot the points uh looks like i did good here with the size you can see all the ordered pairs notice it does help to put them in little boxes like that and then the y of 9 pi over 2, this will be the last one. Okay, um, so this is going to be 1 half cosine of 1 half times 9 pi over 2 minus pi over 4. So this is uh, 1 half cosine. So 9 pi over 4 minus pi over 4 is 8 pi over 4, which is 2 pi. So this is the cosine of 2 pi. So again, this is asking what is the x-coordinate on the unit circle when the angle is two pi? It's the same thing as the angle of zero, right? So, um, you know, you're in, the, you're in the same you're on the same place on the unit circle. So, the x-coordinate is one here. So this is one half times one. So it's one half because the x-coordinate is one. And so this would be the ordered pair nine pi over two, comma, and then uh, one half. And now the hardest part for me. This is the hardest part. It's the actual connecting the dots. It's, it's not <laughs> something. Here. Uh, I'm great at so here we go. Here's the straight line. <laughs> that's that's a straight line, and that's the. Let me do that again. I can probably do a better job. I guess I could start using a ruler. I think I can. I don't know if I can use a ruler with the pen I'm using. So this is the y-axis. This is the x-axis, and we've broken this up uh, into multiple pieces. Um, let me actually make it a little bit bigger here. Let me make the x-axis bigger. Just go this way, like that. All righty. There we go. A little bit better. And so this is going to be zero here, obviously, so I won't label it. And then we have uh, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, and 9 pi over 2. Let's go ahead and label those. So uh, we have pi over 2. And then we have um, 3 pi over 2. And then we have uh, 5 pi over 2. Hopefully my graph looks okay. Then we have 7 pi over 2. And then we have 9 pi over 2. So again, just do your best. Um, and I found that most people are better at uh, this than I am. <laughs> so um, the biggest it's going to be is 1 half, and the smallest is negative 1 half. So the range here is going to be 1 half to negative 1 half. And if you look here, you can tell that's because uh, of the 1 half in front of uh, the cosine function. All right, so let's see. We have. Uh, pi over two it's actually at its maximum it's actually at one half so um this is not drawn to scale so i'm going to put the one half here okay this is not to scale and i'll put um let me just do my two again and i'll put the negative one half down here okay and actually let me just go a little bit lower maybe there looks a little bit better trying to do a decent job so we're up here at one half okay that's our first point and then at 3 pi over 2, we're at 0, so it's down here. Let me use a different color for the dots. I'm going I'm to use red. Okay, so they really stick out. And then at 5 pi over 2, we're down here at the minimum. Now, it's tempting to draw a line, <laughs> but it's not a line. Remember, it's a wave function, so you got to, like, make it curvy. And at 7 pi over 2, it's 0. And at 9 pi over 2, we're back at uh, 1 half. Looks like a V if you just didn't know it was a wave function, right? So, so it's going to do something like this. It's going to curve down like this. It's going to curve up like this. Curve. Oh, see, messed up there. It's going to curve down like this. Then it's going to curve like this. Then it's going to do something like this. And then it's going to do something like this. Concavity. And that is what you call a beautiful graph. I, that, that's pretty good. I'm impressed with, with my work. Yeah, so that's how you graph uh, a cosine function. Uh, hopefully this has helped someone. I just checked. This video has been over 14 minutes, and I thought I was rushing. I feel like I rushed through um, a lot of these computations. I feel like I really rushed through like explaining you know, the steps here. This is just from the unit circle, right? So 
Hopefully this video helps someone. Good luck.